Hey guys, welcome to my graphing video. We're gonna graph a demand curve and an inverse supply curve. If you don't know the difference between a demand curve or an inverse demand curve, or the difference between a supply curve or an inverse supply curve, I did just make a couple of videos to show how to invert them. They tell the same information. The difference is, is that one of them is Q as a function of P. That's when you get an actual demand or supply curve. And the other is P as a function of Q and that's when you have inverse curves. That's pretty small stuff compared to what we're doing right now though. We're gonna graph these. And this graph should look pretty familiar at first. Q on that axis, P on this axis. There's a demand curve, there's a supply curve. Now I'm not gonna get all artsy and try to get the exact slopes right or anything. I wanna populate this thing with numbers. And if your teacher is picky about art, you can worry about the slopes and stuff on your own. So, mostly, in order to make sure that this graph's right, I need to know this intercept, this intercept, and this intercept. And then later, in some different videos, I solve for quantity and price as well. But let's not worry about that right now. Let's focus on this intercept first. This intercept here is the one where I have some quantity that is associated with zero price. What do I mean by zero price? I mean that if price were to fall all the way down to zero, it would push my quantity to here. This is the quantity that is linked to zero dollars for the good. This is how much we would pick up from the store if it was free. And so to do that, I'm going to take my demand curve and set P equal to zero. Let's see, Q equals 100 minus 4P. Substitute that thing and make it equal to zero. Q equals 100 minus four times zero equals 100. The intercept here is 100. Okay, next step. I wanna get the vertical intercept for my demand curve and I will do it by setting Q equal to zero. Why getting Q equal to zero? Well, if we lower Q all the way to zero, we will find the part of our demand curve that touches the Q equals zero axis. So let's solve for that next. I want to get 100 minus four P equals zero. I'm sorry, equals Q and I'm going to set Q equal to zero. So 100 minus 4P equals zero. I'm gonna add 4P to both sides. And I'm gonna watch as those beauties cancel out. 100 equals 4P. Divide both sides by four. P equals 25. There it is. So that is how you could graph a demand curve. Uh, just solve for the intercepts and you'll be fine. Now, to graph the supply curve, I'm going to do something very similar, but with the other graph. I wanna find the intercept of this thing on the vertical axis. Well, it's already in inverse form, so it's actually really easy. Just like for finding the vertical axis for demand, I set Q equal to zero, I'm gonna do the same for the supply but it's gonna be easier now because it's already in inverse form. P equals 10 plus two Q. Substitute Q equals zero. P equals 10 plus two times zero is 10. We got, an in, we got the intercept there. Now, if I wanted to find the point where these two are equal to each other, I set the curves equal to each other or set the quantities equal to each other or whatever. You can go and watch my video on solving for equilibrium if you want to do that. But I was just trying to show you how to put these graphs, these lines on a graph, and I hope it was helpful to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck.